me. Wake up all the minutes to live. Couple of seconds. Okay, so we're broadcasting now. <clears throat> there we go. Perfect. All right. So, Erika, um, Grace, if you get, uh, if you can uh, take your, uh, turn your, comp your camera on. Hello, Grace. Everyone. How are you today? Doing good. It's so cold, so I'm kind yeah, of. It's cold. it's cold. What happened to you, teacher? Your finger, your thumb. Uh, I um, I had a little accident. Not not really that. You know, I mean, my car, my car's door uh, closed with my finger in. So, oh my god! Um, it's not broken or anything, but look, look my 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 nail. Oh yeah, it's purple. So uh, if I touch it, it hurts. If I hit it, I mean, I lose conscious like three seconds <laughs> because. <of the pain. laughs> I so I need so. to have it. I need to have it, uh, you know, protected mm. because yeah. it really, really hurts. Yeah. Well, you know. Things happen. <laughs> yeah. So, um, by the way, probably next week mm -hmm. we will have. I will have um, uh, me my uh, annual meeting with Cambridge as a speaking examiner. Okay. Uh, they they would um, my my team leader supposed to confirm if it's Saturday or Sunday. We don't know yet. So if it's Saturday, what do you want to do? You want to um, uh, recover classes week and during the week, a couple of days, maybe one hour and a half, or you want another instructor? What is, um, what is the best for you? It's up to you, teacher. Hmm. I have no problem with um, uh, making over classes on the weekend, I mean, on weekdays. But I don't know your mm -hmm. schedules, right? Maybe we wouldn't have to. So think about it. Think okay. about, it, about what day and what time. And in case, in case it is Saturday, okay? So we don't know okay. yet. Last okay. night I finished my, um, I had to do some exams, five exams, five examinations, mm -hmm. oral examinations. Um, I finished at 12 midnight because the due date was uh, 2020. And they, they told us on January, but como buen mexicano, I dije, nah, pues todavía falta. And then when I realized it was only a couple hours, I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so I finished 30 minutes before the due, due day, but I finished. Okay, good. Okay, let me share my, oh wait, on this stuff, my screen. So how was your uh, homework? I know Anai did it. I know Giovanni hey, did it. Uh, I don't know the rest. So why don't we share the uh, our results? Let's see, Anai, I'd like to listen to you. The majority of the students say me that love to talk uh, and they are interpersonal and linguistic, I suppose. Okay, okay, they, they speak in a, they speak in activities? Yes. All, so what all kind of, so what, what, uh, what type of intelligence is that? Speaking activities for adults. Interpersonal and verbal linguistic. All right, all right, very good. Excellent. Um, so, verbal linguistics, so speaking examiner, interesting. What about you, Giovanni? Um, well, I have, well, it's a couple, it's Gabby and Paul, and I, and I, 
ask them for what kind of, of activities they like about present continuous. And for example, Gabby said songs, group work and exercises. And Paola said work, grow, work group, games and readings. And well, I think for example, Gabby, it's, it's musical. And for example, Paola, it's kinesthetic and verbal linguistic. And they both are a little bit interpersonal. Well, I think. Yes, very good. Excellent. So uh, especially the kinesthetic part, right? Uh, they want to have uh, groups and some sort <laughs> of uh, contact. Very good. Thank you, Giovanni. Uh, Grace, did you do your homework? Will you share with us, please? Yeah, sure. Well, half of the students, uh, well, I think all of them were um, a linguistics, mm -hmm. but half of them only talk, told me about that. They just told me that, oh, I like reading and writing. And, but the other half, they said uh, they love to talk. So they really enjoy when they practice talking to other students. So half of them were only linguistics, but I would say the other half was linguistic and linguistics and interpersonal uh, because they love interaction with others. Very good, excellent. Okay, like your, um, very good. Um, what about Claudia, do you do homework? Oh, sorry, teacher. No, I didn't. Ah, pues ya, ni modo. TikTok. We didn't have electricity. We didn't have internet. We didn't uh, have... For internet. one day, Choros. No. One day. No. Almost the whole week. Híjole. Where, where part of the country do you live? Uh, in Chihuahua. Oh, yeah. They have a different problem. Okay. Well, all right. <laughs> so, um, what about you, Alberto? I don't know what are you talking about, teacher. Okay, la canción that's even worse, no? Pues ya TikToks for for este for because I'm not doing homework. You weren't here last week. Yes, you were. Yeah, no, I have. Uh, uh, no, no, I have a uh, uh, work interview. Oh, okay, all right. Did it good go? Did it go okay? So. Uh, do you get a job? Alberto? Yes, everything okay, but, but I, sorry, I don't know. Okay, so your, your internet is- I'm here, you listen to me? Yes, but you're, you're, uh, you're cut enough. Oh, okay. Yes, I have some Wi-Fi problems. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Erika, what about your homework? Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay, my uh, the most of my, my students are younger. They have five or six years and, and two, one of high school and one of fifth grade. And the house said they like tell the story, talk and memorize and puzzle. And the other part said, like, play, listen to music, and move. I think that most of them are interpersonal. All right. Very good. Okay. What about you, este, Ivan? Yes, teacher. I did my homework. And the results are that most of the my students are visual because I asked them about what what activities would you like would you like to have if we are seeing a present a present simple and they told me that they will they would like to do uh, making drawings seeing seeing flashcards watching videos about the topic and okay. only one and only huh? one of them they he he told me that he just he just wants the formula to make the sentence okay so according to those results ivan 
What type of intelligence could you um, uh, identify? Visual or spatial. Very good. The only one mathematical, logical. Very good. And uh, the, that one is going to have a hard time learning English, but yeah, that's okay. <laughs> Very good. Thank you, Ivan. Excellent. Mili, did you do your homework? No, because I didn't come in the last class. Choros. I really? I never know about the, the, the um, homework. But what about the TikToks? You never sent me the TikToks, but that's okay. Yes, I did. No, no. I was, well, 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 yes. I was, I was dancing. Now I was in a sexy elf. No, 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 no. TikToks for, <laughs> for real TikToks, not the lesos. Gabby, did you uh, do your homework? No, I didn't do my homework. I forget it. Excuse me. I didn't do. I have a lot of responsibilities, but I forget it. No, I, pues I, ya, TikToks, ni modo. <laughs> eh, 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 Nancy? Nancy, um, eh, Nancy, uh, what was her name? Arroyo or Jacobo, I don't know the last name. Got online and then he she listened about uh, is the homework and, 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 and then locked up. <laughs> oh my Lord in heaven. Anyways. Okay, well, let me share my screen for you so we can continue with the class. Can you see my screen now if you see it? Yes. Yes. All right, let me see. Oh, no. Wait. Es que tengo que... Hold on a second. It went from the... The first one. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, there you go. This is the one. Yes. There you go. So let's talk about learning styles. This has to do with actually um, multiple intelligences, okay? Once we have identified our students' type of intelligence, now then we can apply with the different types of learning styles that we have at hand, okay? Well, let's talk about a little bit for the introduction. Can you read the, the first part, Grace, please? Um, introduction, it refers to uh, uniqueness of how each learner receives and processes new information through their senses. Very good. So check this out. How they process the information they receive through sensations, through the senses. Okay, so the, the, the sight, the, the listening, etc., etc., etc. Continue reading the first, the first point, Mr. Erika. Okay. Each person is born with certain preference to work particular styles, but culture, experience, and development influences these preference, preferences. Very good. So everyone is born, is born with particular styles, yes or no? Well, we, we discussed that with the different type of intelligences, right? These are uh, influenced by society, by the family, by all that is around that person. Uh -huh. Okay, so what are the, uh, the, the last, the next point, Giovanni, please? Mm, the four most common learning styles are visual, oral, reading, writing, and kinesthetic tactile. Very good. So it's visual, oral, reading, writing, and kinesthetic tactile. Excellent. So let's talk about each one of those. 
The first one, the visual learning style. Can you read this, Alberto Zuniga? The four learning styles. The visual learning style, visual learners process information most effectively when the information is seen. Okay, very good. So our students, most of our students, actually most of us, most of us are uh, visual, yes or no? We, we rather watch the movie than reading the book. <laughs> we rather watch television than uh, mm -hmm. read a book, right? Yeah. So most of us are visual. So most of our students are visual. That's why teachers, and this is parenthesis, it's very important for you to have visual aids in your classroom. Let me repeat it for you. It's very important for you to have visual aids. It doesn't matter if it's, a, it's in, 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 in the you know, physical classroom or is in an online classroom. You must, especially English teachers, must have uh, visual aids. That's why, I don't know if you've seen the classrooms and this uh, lady and these um, uh, bilingual schools, the, the classroom de la Miss de Inglés, how is the classroom de la Miss de Inglés, how is decorated? A ver, Mili, tú que eres la Miss de Inglés. With a lot of visual aids, with a lot of colors, and some images. Very good, colors, images, etc. Okay, so what do we do in our actual classes, well, we have, let me, here. We're gonna have flashcards, flash cards. okay? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, what is a flashcard, Erika? Can you describe a flashcard? Yes, it's an imagine and it has colors or something to explain without letters for the students. Very important, without letters. It's only an image. Now, back in my day when I started teaching, we didn't have Google. We didn't even have a printer because printers were expensive. So we actually cut up images. Yeah, I drawing, but I draw like a very bad. So what I did is I had my scissors, and I cut up from magazines. Now we have, now we have uh, Google, <laughs> Google images. It's, we have Pinterest. We have apps only for images. So you just Google or, or browse and Pinterest photo, niña, viajando. And then you will have like 200 different thousand images of photo de niña viajando. So nowadays teachers and this, let me, let me, uh, let me put it this way. And I'm sorry if I'm, I'm being too harsh. Um, it, the teacher nowadays, the, the English teacher that doesn't use flashcard it's a very lazy teacher. You must use visual aids, it's a must. Now, flashcards is for something to explain, for example, your vocabulary. This is a luggage, or this is a mountain. This is a, I don't know. This is a teacher Yerson, super teacher Yerson, no? <laughs> Things like that. But always use flashcards. And then we have, hey, we have, hold on. Oh, interesting. Okay, let me see. Yes, we have keywords. What is keyword? What is a keyword? Well, what is Q, first of all? Q is a synonym for 
um, for a clue. Yes, do you remember, remember that uh, TV show for children, Blue's Clues? Yes, yes. Okay, so it's a clue, it's a hint. Something that you don't know, give me a hint, give me a clue, give me a, well, Q, a Q word, it's a word that you are going to leave it on the screen if it's, uh, if it's a online class or in the blackboard if it's a physical classroom for an important, listen to me, an important word during the class. For example, let's say you are teaching present continuous. Okay, what would be a very important word or Yes, word or part of a word to for the students to remember in present continuous. The verb plus ing. Very good. So example, I would have the Q word something like this. Uh, wait, let me make it bigger, bigger. Yes. Um, Something like this. And then we'll have, I have it, I will have it big in my screen, and then I can refer to it. And maybe Erica makes a mistake. I am read. And I said, A ver, Erica. And then I point to the to the to the uh, keyword. I am read. And Erica's are reading. That's why it's called keywords. You're queuing. You're Teacher queuing. Person. Yes. Uh, I, I, I understand uh, in Spanish is palabra clave to translate. Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes. Yes, it's a, it's a, it's an important an important um, word that you must have it in the class. Okay? Why is this important? Why is it important to have Q words in the classroom? There is. Because this make. Hmm? Because they. Grace and then Claudia. Mm, for, because um, that's the, probably it's the thing, the main thing you are learning in the class. So that's the students will always keep in mind that word. So they will uh, have actual. Um, benefit from the class. Very good. Claudia? Yes, because you are doing like your students make you make your brain work. Try to reach in their brain for that that they already learned. Very you know good. what I mean? Yes, yes, perfect. Excellent. So we have thank you very much, Grace and Claudia. Flashcards, Q win, uh, Q words, and then we have um, what it says here, graphs, charts, flow charts, errors, cycle hyperarchies, um, etc. What are those? Sorry. Yeah. Heritage. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I, I, can, I don't know how I say hierarchies. What is the Her hyperarchies. It's um, that would be that organigramma is, in Spanish. Organigramma, oh yeah. Okay. So for example, um, for example, also my maps is not here, but my maps is very good for vocabulary. You, you, you know the my map, right? It has something in the middle and then it has a lot of like a spider thing. Um, for example, you're, you're, um, if you're teaching vocabulary of, I don't know, um, uh, clothing, so you you will write in the middle clothes, and then you will have t-shirt, pants, blah 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 blah. That's a my man. My man is perfect for vocabulary teaching. Okay, good, excellent. So visual aid. Bottom line, teachers, English teachers must have, and let me repeat, must have uh, visual aids. That's a must. If a teacher doesn't use visual aids. Is a very lazy teacher. Okay, good, excellent. 
The second one is the oral learning style. Can you read it, este, Ivan? Oral learners process information most effectively when spoken or heard. Okay, so lectures, discussions, they like to talk and your music and dramas. Not a lot, not a lot of people are oral uh, learners, okay? Uh, teachers love, and we actually would love if our students would be orals. Why? Grace? Because we can know if they are actually learning or not. Very good. And secondly, because it's the easiest. No? Don't be like the Kool-Aid teacher that walks into the classroom and start talking and talking and talking. And they the notebook, copy estas oraciones, diez verbos, and talk, 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 and thinking that our students will actually learn by listening to us. That's not true. Only a few people are oral. Okay? So... Uh, they like music, they like dramas, and so forth. What about um, the reading style? Can you read this, este, Andrea? These learners process information most effectively, effectively when presented in a written language or format. They benefit more from teachers that use Blackboard. They recall information from their mind's eye, and many academics have a strong preference for this learning style. Very good. So what happened to your cat? <laughs> um, I don't know. He just gets really, uh, uh, he's outside, and I think he wants to get in my room. I, it's, it's locked. And oh. he always cries when it's a, there's a door locked. I don't know why he, do, he does that. Uh, he feels insecure. Yeah, that's normal in cats. Cool. All right. So these learners process information when they read it. Now, let me ask you, teachers, do you really think our students like to read? No. 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 Not all. No. There might be, there might be one or two nerds, excuse me, one or two um, special cases <laughs> that might like to read. Yeah, that's okay, but that's a my, minority. Okay, so if you only prefer to do this, don't do that because students will not learn. That's why many people it goes to secundaria, prepa, universidad, and they still are in basic one. Because they, the teachers only focus on the writing. Ya sabes, no, the Kool-Aid teacher. Copien las 10 oraciones. De 20 verbos, llegan una oración de cada verbo. What kind of teaching is that? That doesn't work. Teacher, Herson. Yes. Yes, Gabi. Because the teacher now in the schools, in the schools, doesn't want to, to make the students speak English. That's why, uh, that's why uh, the students uh, doesn't speak this language. They don't want the, the, the students to learn? Well, you know, this is this is a, we can we can talk and talk by hours about this topic. You know, I have a theory. Um, in my my only theory, my my I only I'm, I'm going to say only one. Uh, many people think that teaching English is easy. Many people think like. Ah, pues es que mira, ya terminé este, mis 12 niveles de inglés o 5 niveles de inglés y voy a dar clases de inglés. If, no, don't be mistaken. If 
you really feel it, if you really like it, that's good. But if you're thinking that teaching English is easy because you speak English, it doesn't work. So that's why llega un momento en que te das cuenta que chin la regué y nada más vas a tu trabajo porque necesitas el trabajo. No, the same it, with, with the Spanish, no? It's the same with the Spanish, exactly. Who said that? Me, Alberto. Yes, it's the same with the Spanish, same with any uh, subject. No, ya sabes, el, 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 el que da física en, en secundaria y es ingeniero, pff, no sé, en robótica. He's not he's really interested in teaching. Ya sabes, hasta lo dice, ¿no? Pues miren, aquí voy a apuntar. Ustedes saben si aprenden o no. So, no. English teachers, we must be, we must have that feeling. Millie, I know you're an English teacher for years. What is the best uh, or the favorite thing for, uh, for English teachers? I mean, like, what is what makes you want to be an English teacher? Can you repeat the question, please? Yeah. What makes you want to be an English teacher or continue being an English teacher? Uh, many of the students, when they say, I can't, I can't speak English, I can't understand, then when they start to have a very good advance, that's making me feel like a I, I maybe I'm not an excellent teacher, but they are learning and they are continuing. Um, yes, they have a development, and that's amazing. That's why Brilliant. I say, oh, "Wow, maybe, maybe they can do it." Excellent. So you make a difference in their lives, basically. All right, we we just wander off on the topic. All right, very good. So um, they don't like to read. Most of them, some do, but you may incorporate this type of learning uh, once in a while in your classes, okay? Uh, now, what about um, the kinesthetic? Can you read this? Este, um, who is Zeta T.E. Blade? If you could turn your uh, camera on or, or manifest. <laughs> Hola. Hmm. Hola, hola, ZTE Blade. Bueno. Okay, removed. Um, can you read this, Claudia? Claudia, are you here? Yes, I'm sorry, teacher. Yeah. These learners process information actively through physical meanings, means. Uh, do you like practice and simulation of these topics being studied? They gesture when speaking. They are poor listeners. They lose interest in long speeches. As a result, they don't usually do well at school. Very good. So they like practice and uh, they like, uh, they gesture a lot. They don't like to listen <laughs> and they're moving around like crazy. They love to move around. Like my mother said, bueno, que tienes gusanos en el, <laughs> you know. But they do, I mean, not, not the gusano part, but they, they actually need that. They, yeah, I know. They actually need that for concentrating. That's part of their nature. So my advice with this type of uh, students and with this type of learning is simple. Keep them busy. 
okay? Even though it's a Zoom class or it's an online class, like for example, you can you can play a lot. Um, Simon says, Simon says, give me show me something red. So they have to run run around the class, the, the the house and look for something red. And you can even make it more complicated, no? Show me, Simon says, show me a um, teacher, a green teacher. So they're gonna be walking around the house and they would actually concentrate and do the activity. Hello, Arturo. Hi, Mr. That's in tu viaje astral, Carmen. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Okay. So keep them busy. That's the only solution with them. They are not going to behave. If you expect your students, those type of students that they learn by moving around, don't expect that they sit and listen to you. That's not going to happen. You may enforce them, right? because you're the authority, but they're not going to learn English. So keep them busy. Do activities that they, the, the physical este, exercises involve. Okay, maybe cutting off, doing props, uh, puzzle, uh, puzzle resolving, etc. Okay, good. So, May I, may I say something? Yes, Millie, of course. Well, I have a problem. Wait, it's not a problem. I am a kinesthetic person and my daughter is two. So we have the problem that we cannot be uh, relaxed. We cannot be learning like, oh yes, I'm listening to you. We have to keep moving. So. With her, it's very, very difficult for me um, that uh, can make that she learn something in their class or with Zoom. So with her, I tried to make like an um, exathlon. <laughs> can you remember the program exathlon? Mm -hmm. So I need to do things like that in all my house to make that she can learn something because if I don't do that, she's like, I don't know, I can't remember. And uh, as a teacher, I need to do a lot of plays with my students. For me, uh, be less uh, boring for me and less um, heavy class. And it's very, very difficult, but at the same time, it's very easy when you have a student like that because you can understand them because they are like, they are, the other teacher said, oh, that kind of student is too lazy. They are mad. They are, um, I wouldn't say bad behavior, but that is not true. It's a really, really situation that they can't uh, control. It's something inside their brain. They can't control that. They are not bad students. They are not um, lazy people. They have a different uh, type of learning. Is that it? Exactly, exactly. And they're, they're you know, uh, I understand. I, I am the opposite. I'm very, very lazy. You know, I don't. You know, <laughs> I, I, I'm not ashamed of saying it. You know, when I was, uh, when I was a, a child. Uh, ya sabes, todos eran de correr y yo no, yo que no, vamos a ver tele. So um, now that I'm a teacher, I find so annoying the students that move around. It is, for me it's annoying. It's like, oh yeah, come on. But you need to understand their nature. Okay, you need to understand that that is them. Your responsibility, teachers, is to find the strategies to keep them busy. Repeat, keep them busy. Okay, let's talk about now practical things for these uh, learning styles. Let's talk about 
the visual learning style. Read number one, uh, Ivan. Replace words with symbols or initials. Very good. Like for example, you're 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 revising an essay, a written task, and instead of uh, correcting, develop a code. He dicen, okay, if I circle, it's a, a spelling mistake. If I underline twice, it's a coherence mistake. If I write on on uh, Lashes, uh, slashes, it's, uh, it's uh, a, um, a birth mistake. I don't know, things like that. So students can see the symbols and then relate to the correct answer. This is, this is also, you remember the back in the primaria, the happy faces and the sad faces, no? Or the estrellitas, or the same thing. It's the same thing. You're replacing concepts into words. Now, number two, Erika. Translate concept into pictures and diagrams. Very good. Mind maps. Okay, let's talk about vocabulary of clothing. Okay, clothes and complete the mind map. Okay, number three, race. Underline or highlight your notes or textbooks with different colors. Excellent, call coding. If I underline uh, your work, your notebook with um, with red, it's a mistake, uh, I don't know. If I underline it with, um, with green, it's uh, do over again, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Number three, uh, next one, excuse me, not number three, Giovanni. Your audio. It's practice. Yes. So practice turning your visual black into words. Very good. So if you have an image, write, uh, write the name for the image. Okay. Uh, what is the title? What is the best title for this picture? What is the best? Uh, or, or tell me five emotions for teacher Gerson. Okay, so students see, relate, and then put it into words. Okay. The last one is the Claudia. Ah, is niño niña? <laughs> niño. Ah. Make flashcards. That one. Yes. Uh, make flashcards of key information with words, symbols, and diagrams. Very good. So you will have again flashcards with words like you win words. Symbols and diagrams. Excellent. Sure. That one. Yes. Uh, make flashcards of key information with words, symbols, and diagrams. Very good. So you will have. Oh, Steven, Steven is watching the. Stephen is watching the, um, the transmission in YouTube. What about the oral learning style? Can you read this, Giovanni? The first one. Uh, the oral learning style, attend lectures and tutorials. Very good. So uh, again, it, it, you will have one or two exceptions in your classroom that love listening to you. Not really that uh, uh, common. Erika, number two. Okay. Discuss topics with your instructor and other students. Again, not really common. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Ivan. Put summarized notes on tape and listen to them. You can you can leave this as a homework. This is this is cool. Now now with a cell phone you can record your voice, right? You you have the the voice notes. Okay, so okay now uh, instead of saying write the the story about uh, Juanito Perez, tell the story, record it and send it to me. 
That's pretty cool. So they will record it, listen to it, and then send it to you. Uh, next one is the Andrea. Join a study group or have a study buddy. Yeah, pair work, right? Uh, next one is the Arturo. They record your lectures. Very good. Record your lectures. Okay. And last one is Tanai. When recalling information or solving problems, talk out loud. Very good. So that's why, that's why um, when, when they have in, uh, when they're, when you, they're doing their, some ex type of exercise, they, is, they read aloud. Or sometimes they just, it seems like they're praying, you know, because they need to be listening to something. That's okay. What about the reading, writing, learning style? Can you read the first one, Grace? Write out important information again and again. Have you seen, uh, the, have you seen this type of a student that have, uh, that has, excuse me, postics? I do. You do, okay, all right. I am that kind of. Okay, so they have postics and sometimes, and uh, you can tell me if I'm telling the truth, Grace, sometimes you write the same thing. Different postics, same thing. Yeah, like every, my to-do list, I have a lot of post-its and every time I study for college, I rewrite the lessons again to remember. That's how I remember what I just studied. Wow. I'm sorry for that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, who said that? I, I, me, Alberto. I have okay. a question. Yes. Uh, the reading and writing learning style could be the, I don't know, that you have to write the, the information or the class, maybe the topic, the learning style. Exactly. Uh, that, that you have to do that because it's the only way you you can learn or you can remember the topic. Well, I I do that all the time. I don't uh, if I read, I don't understand very well. But when I'm right, I I understand almost all so i don't know if that kind of uh i don't know what to say uh i know the the learning to, style uh, the learning style yes uh, that's exactly the what same? it is yes ex that's exactly what it is that uh, you will have some type of students that you you may explain as a teacher but they need to have it, uh, they need to write it in order to understand it. Like yourself. That is the, the reading, writing, to, the learning style. Yes. Okay, good. Uh, next one is the Anai. Read your notes silently. Very good. They need to have silence. Okay, that's their nature. Next one, Arturo. Organize any diagrams into statements. Very good. They have the mind map. Now they make a list of the clothing uh, items. That's what. That's how they learn. Next one, Grace. Rewrite the ideas and principles in other words. Very good. Last one, Claudia. Make flashcards of words and concepts that need to be memorized. Excellent. Very good. So again, with uh, post-its, with the uh, uh, the flashcards, ya sabes, no? All of that. Very good. What about the kinesthetic? Number one, Erika. Okay, sit near the instructor in classroom situations. 
Very good. This is this is both ways, okay? You these guys they like to move around, okay? So you can tell them, okay, you're going to be my assistant for the day. Sit next to me. It's a, it works both ways, right? To keep them busy and to keep them, you know, behaving. Now this is a physical classroom. In Zoom, well, you might need to find out another strategy, such as, for example, okay, Juanito Perez, uh, you are going to count the uh, attendance today. I don't know. You are going to um, uh, make sure that everybody has the camera on. I don't know, something to keep them busy. That's what they need. They have too much energy. Okay. Next one, Ivan. Read out loud from your textbook and notes. They read aloud, and more than that, they have they grab their pencil and they start moving the pencil around. Or if all the girls, if they have the 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 leg crossed, they move the leg around. Really annoying, really annoying, but that's their nature. Okay. Next one is the. Claudia? Yes, Claudia. Uh, copy key points onto large writing surface. Um, I, I don't know, how is that? <laughs> Dark word or is word. Okay, this is, this, is, this is like, you know, physical classroom. If you have a, if you have a student that is, you know, needs to be uh, BC, have them come into the front of the classroom and write in the board so they can actually move around. Okay. Um, uh, next one is the Ivan uh, Giovanni. Uh, mm, copy keep on word in software very good so uh in this in this uh, in this area and this time this is actually very important all of our students should be have access to word or word pad or whatever it is so they can actually the notes and the cell phone so have them you know busy keep, keep them busy writing something not necessary that they have to write it it's just something that they are doing, okay? Um, uh, Grace, next one. Listen to audio tapes of your notes while exercising. You do that? No, I don't. No? <laughs> Who was kinest kinesthetic? Oh, Millie, do you do that? Listen to audio tapes or yes. your notes while exercising. Yes. Um, sometimes. Okay. Uh, like podcasts. Maybe. Yeah, podcasts. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that that's the same same principle. Audio audio books. Same principle. You're doing something. You're doing exercise, or you're doing uh, you're cooking, or you're doing some sort of physical activity and you're listening to something that you want to learn okay that's how it works uh next one also the aura, no? yes but the difference is alberto that you are listening or this type of person is listening while they're doing some sort of physical activity not just okay. listening to the audio they are cooking they are driving, they are, I don't know, exercising, they're doing something, you know, besides when listening. Okay. Sorry, Millie. Okay. Next Since one. Since when I was little, yes. I, my mom started start to cook and I was cooking with her when I was talking at the same time. Like, I don't know. She's chopping the, the tomatoes or something. And yes, you need you do that. 
yeah. just like um, relate what you are doing, something like that. Yes, yes, exactly, and and uh, that's okay. You need to, you need. They need that in order to, to uh, how do you call it? To, to um, to learn. Okay, very good. Next one, Arturo. Taking information through field trips, laboratories, trial and error exhibits, collections, and hands-on examples. Very good. Again, everything has to do with physical activity, physical activity. Next one is the Anai. Put real life examples into your net summary. Very good. Next one is the Andrea. Recall experiments and role play. Role playing, they love role playing. Ya sabes, no vamos a, okay, let's role play. Ya sabes, el niño, me, teacher, me, mimis, mimis. Right? Uh, next one, este, I, uh, Ivan, yes. Use pictures and photographs that illustrate an idea. Very good, excellent. All righty. Um, it's 11. Two, you want to take a baby break? Yes. yes, okay. So uh 11 2, 11 3. So we meet you here at 11 20. So yes. 15 minutes. Okay. Yes. So I'll see you here at 11 20. Thank you. All right.
Ready, guys? Ready. Yes. Excellent. Very good. Perfect. <clears throat> Good, let me share my screen. All righty. So let's talk about the language study. Can you read the introduction, este, Erika, please? Yes, the language study is the case focus on the structure and use of language forms. Very good, so it's a, uh, it's all the all the um, the information that we can use for studying English. That's pretty much you know in a colloquial way. Okay. So <laughs> can you continue the next point? Can you read it, este, Ivan? Studying structure and use. We can use these concepts to teach the morphology of forms, the syntax of phrases, clauses and sentences, vocabulary, including meaning and their lexical grammar, pronunciation, spelling. Okay, so again, all the information, all the terms that had to do with grammar, that's the language study. The morphology, the syntax, the vocabulary, the pronunciation, the spelling, the rules, the exceptions, uh, the apply grammar, advanced grammar, basic grammar, blah, 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 okay? All the things that we need to master it. That's a must, okay? All righty. So let's talk about how do we explain this? The first one, the technique of demonstration. Can you read the first point, Grace, please? Here, the teacher presents a situation which shows the language in action and then mod modeling the language ourselves. Very good. So in this part, you demonstrate, yes, you present the situation, you demonstrate, you model, and then your students copy. See? Continue reading, Giovanni. Uh, the language can be used in a text which clearly shows what it means. Very good. Continue reading. We can also use pictures for various item, various items or realia. Realia. Very good. Realia to demonstrate meaning. Excellent. Um, what is what is realia? Anyone knows? Reality. Yes, it's when you have the object, when you have, for example, if you're talking about, I don't know, uh, for example, you're talking about cell phones. So you, you write your cell phone and they say, say this is a cell phone. Rihanna, it's all the electronic and, tell me, and all the researches that you can find on the internet, right? Yes, uh, well, reality is all the objects or concepts that are real. Okay, so again, the example of the cell phone. And so I'm talking about cell phone. My cell phone is black and I grab, and I grab the, uh, the cell phone to show, to demonstrate I'm using realia because it's a real cell phone. Okay, that's realia. Excellent. What about uh, explanation? Can you read this uh, point, Andrea? We can explain the construction of language in diagrams using the board or overheard overhead projector. We can also use finger pointing to show how contractions are made. Avoid Spanish at all costs. Very good, excellent. Explanation is one of my favorites, favorite techniques, why? I'm talking about English teachers, eh? 
You remember one of the previous classes we discussed about the TTT, teachers talking time. That's exactly what it is, the explanation. No need, no choro. And for some, for some um, reason, teachers love choro. And they love explaining and explaining and explaining. Don't do that. Very minimal. And if you have to explain, because yes, sometimes you have to explain something, you're going to avoid a Spanish. How do you do that? How do you avoid a Spanish? We discussed that earlier in our previous classes. What are some of the techniques? Uh, using uh, similar vocabulary to uh, Spanish. Or you get cognates. Instead of saying, choose the right verb, you would use select the correct verb. And that's, uh, that's uh, valid, right? Also, use visual aids, use a lot of prompts, reality. Sorry. Teacher, I'm sorry. Yes. There's, there's noise. I don't know if you or someone else, but we can really understand you. Uh, everybody has the same experience? Yes. No. Me, me too. Okay, let me close the doors, maybe. I don't know. Is that better? Thank you, teacher. Sorry. That's okay. It's better? Okay. I'll see you. All right. Excellent. So, cognates, visual aids, what else? What other strategy are we use, we're going to be using for avoiding Spanish? How about mimic? Yes, mimic. Using realia. And very importantly, no choro. Because it's, if you want to give the cathedra, what was going to happen? Unless they have a high level, but they are intermediate or basic, what would happen if you elaborate an extensive explanation? What would happen? They are boring. They're going to be bored. And, and finally, you're going to be breaking into what? English or Spanish? Very good, Anai. Spanish, right? Excellent. So keep your explanation simple, brief, concise, to the point, and uh, just give the, infor the necessary information. No more than that. Otherwise, you're going to break into Spanish. Mm -hmm. Discovery, can you read this? Este, let me see, Arturo. Discovery, students could be encouraged to understand new language by discovering by themselves in a text or by looking at grammatical evidence in order to work out a grammar rule. Very good. So students could be encouraged to understand by discovering now. This, 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 this technique is very good. However, teachers, however, our normal and common student do, doesn't like that. Especially if you're working for a secundaria or prepa or primaria, they are forced to take English. So they're not really taking the initiative. Okay. So, but, uh, you know, if, if, if you say, okay, uh, this is a reading, uh, underline the, the verbs in past, that's discovery. Mm -hmm. uh, this is, um, okay, uh, look at this picture and tell me 
uh, five emotions in the picture. That's also discovery. Okay. But uh, you need to be very concise on the, on the um, very, very uh, brief and to the point. Okay. And the um, accurate rep reproduction. Este... Anaí. Teachers ask students to repeat new words phrases or sentences in a controlled way, correcting them immediately and modeling for them. Very good, excellent. So um, this is similar to the mechanical drill. Okay, repetition, repetition. And then the semi-mechanical. And clinical thinking, can you read uh, this, uh, Claudia? Once the students have an understanding of the meaning, use, and construction of the language form, we can ask them to create their own sentences using the language form. Very good. So this might be like a, like a, like I said, a mechanical, right? Fill in the blanks, complete the sentence, continue the story, etc. And the evaluation at the end, Milly, can you read this? Check questions. Yes, right? Yes. We can use check questions to see if this if the students have understood meaning and use comprehension. Question after grammar presentation on the board. Always, always have an evaluation in the class. And when I'm talking about evaluation, I don't mean a quiz or an examination. No, I'm talking about something to evaluate your students from your standpoint. It could be asking questions. It could be pair work and, a, and a, how do you call it? And, um, and a pair work. It could be different things that you can use to see if students get the point or not. Now, if you had 20 students and 15 failed the evaluation, in other words, 15 didn't get present continuous if that was the, the topic, whose fault is it? Erika? The teacher is. Exactly. So you need to go back and check what, uh, what activity did not work for the students. If you have 20, maybe fail, didn't get the point. Well, that's, you know, it's not okay, but it's not your fault. You know, something with this, something was wrong with these guys. Okay, good. All right, so now, for homework, let me open um, the file. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. For homework, you're going to do exercise four of the exercise file. Okay. So let's read it. Adapting a class for different learning styles. Have individual students, in other words, you, pick up one topic and give them some time to prepare a five minute class, adapting it to each and every learning style. The specific topic could be part of vocabulary, grammar presentation, grammar drill of any kind. Okay, so again, you're going to select one of these three topics, whether it's vocabulary, grammar presentation, or a grammar drill. 
What is a grammar drill? Could be fill in the blanks, complete the story, uh, choose the right verb. I don't know, something that has to do with grammar. And then you're going to prepare five minute activity for the learning style. For example, if you, uh, for each of the learning styles, okay? So you will have um, an activity for the oral, an activity for the, uh, for the, um, the kinesthetic, for the visual, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then you're going to present to us the different activities for each of the learning styles. <clears throat> Excuse me, learning styles. Yes? So what's homework, Grace? To make, uh, make a class, basically, for each learning style using vocabulary, grammar presentation, and grammar drill. Uh, just not, not the whole class. It's just an activity. Maybe uh, only an activity. activity. Okay. Maybe I made a mistake. It's not class. So a five-minute activity for the different learning styles. And you're going to say something like, okay, I pick up vocabulary for the for the visual learning style, I would use my maps. For the um uh, oral, I would use um, my uh, tape from the recorded voice. For the uh, kinesthetic, I would play the Simon Says uh, uh, game. And then you go through all the learning styles for the vocabulary presentation. Yes? Well, was it clear the instruction? Yes. Good. Yes, is the Anai? We do some activity for every kind of um, intelligence, of type of intelligence. Uh, not really intelligence, is the learning style. Ah, so there is the oral, the visual, etc., etc. Okay. 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 So this is going to be homework. You start preparing, and then you. Uh, we we're not going to present it. Uh, because it wasn't homework. It has to do. It has to be done in the classroom. But something came up and I need to log out. But um, I'm leaving it as a homework. Why don't we do this? Let's take advantage of the ticks. Record yourself explaining and then send it to us in the chat. Teacher, what are the deadlines? Teacher. Uh, the, the deadlines? Well, it, Friday. Okay. Before Saturday, pues, you know, but record yourself in a video, in a small video, and send it to our to us in the in the chat. Eh, perdón, yeah. profe, disculpe. Yes, who was es, actually, Claudia? Yeah, Claudia, disculpe. Este, no le escuché eso último. ¿Qué es lo que vamos a hacer en el video? Okay, so uh, what is homework, Claudia? Eh, vamos a hacer una como una actividad nada más para cada tipo de, de aprendizaje. Good. You're Ajá. going to you're going to record yourself in the video explaining Ajá. each one of the activities. Ah, okay, okay. Good. O sea, instead of presenting it in the class, you're going to send it to the chat. Ah, okay. We uh, el próximo sábado el próximo sábado entonces no se lo vamos a entregar aquí, sino se lo vamos a entregar en la semana. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, teacher Gerson. Mándeme. Usted da. This video, uh, ah. the time needs five minutes. Yeah, ish, more or less. Okay, okay, thanks. It could be, it could, it could be less, I mean, it is no more than five minutes, it would be too long. Profe, disculpe. Mm -hmm. mm, Podemos uh, tener lo que usted nos puso ahí de, de cada tipo de aprendizaje? It's in the chat. Y si no tienes, te lo vuelvo a enviar. Uh, sí, por favor, porque no, no lo encuentro. Lo, lo estuve buscando, pero no. Ahorita te lo no. envío. Gracias. Sí, no problema. All righty. Any other question? Mm. So, is, uh, we have to choose either one of vocabulary, grammar presentation, and grammar drill? 
Yes, but oh. one activity for each of the learning styles. Okay, thank you. Yes, Erika, you were going to say something? No, no, thank you, that's okay. Okay, cool. I'm um, sorry. Yes. Uh, if I choose, for example, vocabulary, what kind of vocabulary? With it's 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 anyone? open. Yeah, it's open. You, whatever your vocabulary of clothing, vocabulary of traveling. I don't know. It's ah, yes. up to you. Whatever you like the most. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Very good. Excellent. All righty then. Okay. So um. Um, let's call it a day. If you have any questions, um, I'm, I'm open in the, in the WhatsApp and prepare it and I'll be waiting for your videos, okay? Send it to the chat so we can, we can share it to everybody. Okay. All right, all right, very good. So let's take uh, the, the classic selfie. Sin quitar tu cámara, Mili. All right. Mili. Domi gacha. Okay, good. One, two. All righty. Perfect. Okay, so let's call it a day. Thank you very much. It was a very good class. Any question, please let me know. And I'll see you next week. Well, remember, if I have the confirmation from my Cambridge team leader, then I'll let you know, and then we uh, we discuss it in the chat. Mm -hmm. If if uh, how can we uh, manage the um, the my WhatsApp teacher? Yeah. Yes, and the WhatsApp exactly. Okay, thanks. Yes, WhatsApp, yes for, because it's a pleasure to see you. Yeah, because I don't know, I don't know if it's going to be Saturday or Sunday. They, they were going to tell me. Y como somos un chorro, pues, tan chino, ponerse de acuerdo. But anyways, that's a whole different story. All right. Thank you very much. And I'll see you uh, during the week. Yes. Bye. Yes. Bye. Thank you, teacher. Thank, Thank you, you to you, teacher. Have a good day to everyone. Hi, everyone. Bye-bye. Have, have a nice... Bye, uh, Bye-bye. Have a nice weekend. Drink a lot. Party a lot. Have sex. Not you, Andre. Two, Grace. <laughs> see you.